Gypsum is a natural mineral. Since ancient times, it's been mined to produce gypsum plaster. In fact, there's gypsum plaster in Egypt's pyramids. In 1894, a man by the name of Augustine Sackett patented a board made of gypsum, which he called plaster board. But it didn't become the norm in construction until the building boom that followed World War II, when busy contractors abandoned plaster in favor of this faster and more economical way to build walls. The process of making gypsum board begins at the quarry, where crews mine gypsum, a soft rock. The loaders dump their haul into what's called an apron, and the apron channels the gypsum onto a conveyor, breaking up the big chunks along the way. From there, it's into a giant rotating drum. Within eight minutes, this hot air rock dryer removes five to 10% of the moisture, turning the gypsum white. Next stop is a gas-fired silo called the kettle. It cooks the gypsum at 302 degrees Fahrenheit, 150 degrees Celsius, until most of the remaining moisture evaporates. Feeding the kettle is a mill that grinds the lumpy rock into what's called stucco, a fine powder the consistency of wheat flour. In a mixing tank, meanwhile, workers combine water with several powdered chemicals and minerals and chemical soap. The dry additives give the board the required structure, while the soap creates bubbles to make the board lighter. In a separate machine, they mix the stucco with an accelerator to make the gypsum set faster. Now they combine the two separate batches, creating a mixture called a slurry. Now they'll form it into a gypsum board, which is basically a slurry sandwich. The bread is this thick, heavyweight paper. As the roll unwinds, creaser wheels, as they're called, score a line just over one inch, about three centimeters, from both edges. Then a machine evenly spreads the slurry like a sandwich filling between the top and bottom sheets of paper. Next comes the paper folding operation. They fold the edges along the score lines, the bottom edges upward, the top ones downward, gluing them over the bottom ones to trap the slurry inside. Drops of water smooth out any ridges, ensuring a smooth and even fold. This forms plates, then shapes the folded edges into straight sides. An optical sensor checks the depth of the board's recess. This is where the joint tape is put to connect one board to the next when building a wall. The forming station spews out about 1,000 continuous feet, 305 continuous meters, of gypsum board at a time. A cutter now chops that mega board. As the boards exit the cutter, automated prongs flip them to recessed side up. Since the recessed side will be the wall surface, the factory doesn't want to risk damage by having a travel face down on the rollers that leads to the drying station. The gas-fired hot air dryer is more than 492 feet, 150 meters long, and has eight decks. The factory can cure hundreds of boards at a time. It takes 40 minutes to move through the dryer's four temperature zones, which start at 662 degrees Fahrenheit, 350 degrees Celsius, and get progressively cooler. The boards are sold in pairs. So the machinery stacks them in twos, then tapes them together. The tape bears the brand name, as well as the size and thickness of the board. Standard sizes range from eight feet, two and a half meters, to 12 feet, 3.6 meters in length. The tape also tells the customer what type of gypsum board it is. There's standard drywall for building walls in homes. There's a moisture resistant version for humid areas, such as bathrooms. There's also fire-resistant gypsum board, usually required by law for commercial buildings. Thanks for watching.